What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. So what we're gonna be doing here again is another sort of sit and think and talk out loud video. I think I'm gonna call them think out loud videos uh, where I take some hot or controversial topic in fitness currently and just share my opinions and current thoughts on them. Uh, before we get into the topic of this video though, I wanna give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that I've been using to run jeffnipper.com since I think early 2015. That's just about four years now. Um, and it's great. So if you're looking to set up your own website or your own online store, I definitely recommend using Squarespace. They have beautiful designer custom templates that can make your page look really aesthetic and amazing 24 hour customer support, which I use probably a couple times a month. And I'm using the platform every single day uh, to run my own online store where I sell my training programs. Um, so if you're looking to get started with your own website, uh, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered and you can save 10% off your first purchase. Okay, so this video was actually spurred on by a Facebook post from Cliff Wilson. Uh, many of you guys will probably be familiar with Cliff. Um, I think he is, if not the top, certainly one of the top natural bodybuilding coaches in the world right now. I mean, Cliff just doesn't miss when it comes to natural bodybuilding. And it's crazy because if I go to a competition, I can literally pick out which clients are Cliff's just based on how shredded, full, and dense they always look. Um, so anyway, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Cliff. But the other day he posted this really controversial uh, Facebook status, and I just couldn't help but share it on my own Instagram. Um, so I pulled you guys, or at least those of you who follow me uh, on Instagram, and the results were really interesting. Um, so I'm just gonna read out what his status said here. So basically he said, far too many bodybuilders place too much emphasis on squats, deadlifts, and bench presses. People act like these exercises are essential. Yeah, well, in bodybuilding, there are no exercises that you must do. In fact, the closest thing to a must-do movement in bodybuilding would have to be a dumbbell lateral raise. So I posted this on my Instagram. Um, I'll just put the results up here on the screen, but basically it was pretty much split down the middle. 58% of people said yes. And I think that I would agree with the majority here for the most part. Um, I think that the general crux overarching thesis of what Cliff is trying to say here is basically that in bodybuilding, unlike a lot of other performance-driven sports or activities, it really doesn't matter how you built your physique or what exercises you use to build muscle. As long as your physique looks good on show day, then that's really all the judges care about. And I think that's also true whether you're bodybuilding to hit the stage or just go to the beach and maybe impress a crowd of people. Uh, people don't really care if you built your chest up using a bench press or a pec deck or dumbbell flies or what have you, all that they're really noticing is how big and defined your chest is uh, for the most part. So I think that the general crux of this is really obviously true. Um, unlike in a sport, say uh, powerlifting, where you have to perform three lifts, uh, in bodybuilding, there are no must do movements. It just matters how you show up. Taken to the extreme, you could make the case that you don't even need to really lift at all as long as you look good. And I could imagine an extreme genetic outlier uh, showing up on stage having never lifted a weight in his life if he has really impressive genetics and maybe played football or something like that. Uh, you could actually probably do pretty well at a local bodybuilding show without actually even lifting if you had good enough genetics. Um, but still, I don't think that gets to the heart of what we really want to know here, which is, are squats, deadlifts, and bench presses the best exercises for building muscle in any given individual? Um, so I think that when it comes to that, Cliff and I may have a little bit of a difference of opinion. Um, I think I might be a little bit more sympathetic to the powerlifting-centric approach than he is, and that's probably just because I do have a little bit more of a sweet spot for the power lifts because of my extensive background in powerlifting. Uh, many viewers of the channel may not know, but uh, I've competed in at least half a dozen or more powerlifting events myself uh, up to the national level, and I've coached people from the provincial, regional, national, international, and even on the world level. Uh, so I, I have a ton of interest in powerlifting, uh, especially earlier in my career. And I've seen what these lifts are capable of doing, and I think that it can be quite impressive. Um, but I think that a lot of what Cliff is saying here is more or less a response to the trend that we've seen in natural bodybuilding, where you have this crowd of people, and it actually 
I think maybe coincidentally, tends to be aligned with the very, very science-based crowd or so-called science-based crowd. And I think this has come a little bit more out of vogue recently. I remember around 2000 or 2014 or 2015, this sort of reached a peak to the point that if you weren't doing squats, bench presses, and deadlifts, then you might as well be Dom Mazzetti because you were just training like a complete bro. And uh, if you even did a, a, a bicep curl, then you obviously don't, you know, care about science or whatever, which in retrospect seems a bit ridiculous. But there was this kind of dogmatic trend toward powerlifting. And I feel like that has come a little bit out of popularity now because a lot of those people just sort of ended up getting injured and realized that maybe it wasn't worth it uh, after all. Um, but in my opinion, I don't think that there's anything necessarily inherently injurious about the power lifts per se. Uh, I would say it's more so the fact that you have this group of really disciplined and driven bodybuilders who are turning to powerlifting and they're getting very emotionally invested and emotionally attached to their performance on those lifts. Uh, we've all probably had the experience of going in for a big squat PR, and if you miss it, you just feel really deflated. If you get it, you feel amazing about yourself. And I feel like people kind of ended up taking on this somewhat myopic approach to their training where they got so numerically driven that in practice, it just ended up being a reality that sooner or later, people were going to bite off more than they can chew when it comes to uh, how much weight they were handling. And in reality, most people did end up getting injured from this approach. Uh, but I think that's more so an instance of bad lifting psychology and bad programming, not an inherent issue with the power lifts themselves. Um, so anyway, with all that said, uh, I actually quite like the power lifts for bodybuilders for a few reasons. Um, I would say the main one is that they're just so motivating to train. You can get so fired up about going in and hitting a bench press PR in a way that you just can't about hitting a hammer strength press PR or a, a pec deck PR or something like this. Um, and the same goes for, for squats and deadlifts. So if you are feeling very motivated about your training, you're having a ton of fun setting these PRs and, and executing these lifts on a consistent basis, and we know that these lifts activate a ton of musculature, um, if you're consistently applying progressive overload with them, you can build a ton of muscle that way. That isn't to say you can't also build muscle by progressively overloading on similar lifts that train a similar biomechanical movement pattern, but I just don't think you can achieve that same level of enjoyment, intensity, and motivation as you would with the power lifts, or at least in most people. Now, of course, that's kind of a bit of a double-edged sword because by the same token, because you have such a high level of motivation and readiness from day to day, uh, like I said earlier, chances are you might end up pushing that a little bit too far and just getting injured and then setting yourself back further than if you had just made more, say, slow and steady progress with a hack squat or a leg press or something like that. So I think you can come at this two ways, but as I've already said, I think that going against the power lifts is more so going against careless and reckless programming and reckless training psychology, not against the power lifts per se. So I still like the power lifts for that reason. The other reason is that they can be a very efficient way to train. Like we said, squat, bench, press, and deadlifts activate a ton of musculature. And so if you're trying to get, let's say, the most bang for your buck with your training, using these heavy compound lifts is a way to really optimize your time investment in the gym. And this brings me to a point that I feel like a lot of people end up disagreeing on or there people come at this from two different angles where you have one camp of trainers and coaches who are looking for training efficiency. They want to know what exercise is going to give me the best results per unit of time investment or per unit of effort investment. And then on the other hand, you have people like Cliff who are saying, well, I don't really care so much about the time investment and the efficiency. I want to know what program is going to work the best for me. I don't really care how much effort or time it takes. And I think that both of these approaches can have their merit. Uh, many people don't want to be the best bodybuilders in the world, which happen to be the people that Cliff is often coaching. Uh, they might want to just build a nice physique and then still be able to party on the weekends, in which case a more efficient approach might be better. People arguing for efficiency could also say, well, 
maybe the most effective pro approach is also a more inherently risky approach and you might be more likely to get injured. So you should go for something that's going to give you marginal returns over time and just continue to train in an efficient way. And eventually you'll get to the same spot you would have with the more uh, effectiveness approach over here. So uh, I think that they can both have their merit. Uh, I personally, being someone who wants to chase the best results, actually align myself more with what I would imagine is Cliff's philosophy on this, where I don't really think about my programming in terms of how many exercises can I strip away to maximize on my time investment. I think about what exercises can I add in here to fill in all the gaps and make the best training program that I possibly can, the most effective training program for me. So let's just imagine that you are coming at this from an efficiency standpoint. What would be the best routine? Well, I would say a very powerlifting centric routine with a focus on heavy compound lifts. So I would imagine the most efficient routine would be something like this. Uh, you'd pick six exercises. So for me, you'd have the squat, the deadlift. I'd actually probably recommend the Romanian deadlift for bodybuilders, which uh, I'll get back to in a minute. The bench press, the overhead press, a barbell row or a pendulum row, and then you train twice a week. So on one day, you do three of the exercises. So let's say Monday, you'd go in, you do your squat, you do your pull up, and you do your bench press. And then on the other day, you do your Romanian deadlift, your pendulum row, and your overhead press. And you'd probably do something like four to six sets for each movement and train for about an hour each day. So you'd be in the gym only two hours per week, <laughs> that's it, and only two days per week. And you'd still be hitting every body part twice per week, and uh, you can get very impressive results uh, with this training style and only spend two hours a week in the gym. Actually, I would imagine you would probably get something like 80% of the results that you would from a much more convoluted routine for something like 20, maybe 20% 20 of the time investment. Um, so if you're looking for the most efficient routine, that you should do something like that. If you're looking for the most effective routine, then I feel like there are a lot of holes in that program that would need to be filled in to make the best program possible. Um, and that's what I think I'll unpack as I go through this uh, in a little more detail. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this status here one line at a time and just kind of share my quick thoughts on it. So the first line here, we've got far too many bodybuilders place too much emphasis on squats, deadlifts, and bench presses. Now I should say from the outset, I've already said this, but if Cliff and I were on a call here together, we would probably share at least 90% common ground on a lot of this stuff. And if not, I would at least respect our disagreements, our areas of disagreement. Um, but anyway, I, I feel like this first statement here, I, I actually pretty strongly disagree with. On a one to five scale, with five being strongly agree and one being strongly disagree, I'm probably a hard two on this one because I feel like some bodybuilders probably place too much emphasis on squats, deadlifts, and bench presses, especially if they're getting injured and not getting the best results. But in my experience, actually a lot of bodybuilders aren't putting emphasis on these lifts. Now, like I said, I think it was really popular around 2014, 2015 in natural bodybuilding. There was definitely a bandwagon effect going on there uh, back then, but I feel like it's come quite a bit out of popularity uh, in natural bodybuilding. Now you see guys using a lot more exercise variation. Um, but in bodybuilding generally, I feel like if you look at the MPC or the IFBB, it's actually pretty rare to see people taking a powerlifting purist approach to their training. Um, I don't have the closest ties to IFBB bodybuilders, but from those that I have trained with, uh, they tend to really focus on a ton of exercise variation, uh, mind-muscle connection, constant tension, training in active mid-ranges range, of motion, and uh, lots of dynamic effort stuff, uh, variable resistance stuff. So there's just a ton of variety. I wouldn't say there's a lot of focus on squatting, deadlifting, and bench pressing as a power lifter would. Um, I actually think that a lot of these guys would benefit to do more squatting, deadlifting, and bench pressing in lower rep ranges, especially in the off-season when there's more room for uh, various periodization strategies and the recovery is probably a little bit better because I feel like a lot of these guys are kind of just in there pumping around, maybe spinning their wheels, not really progressively overloading. And I feel like these exercises could help them build more of a strength base that could then be applied to other exercises. Um, so I, I would probably mostly disagree with that one, even though I would acknowledge that there certainly are some bodybuilders placing too much emphasis on these three lifts, thinking that 
they're the be-all, end-all, and really putting them up on a pedestal where I don't think they necessarily belong. Next part, people act like these exercises are essential. I uh, definitely agree with that one. Um, probably a four out of five agree on that because there definitely are some people who act like these exercises are required and without them you just can't maximize your potential. That's just simply not true. There are so many different exercises that you can do that if you're injured or if these exercises just don't jive with you, you don't feel them, they, they're awkward, they are uncomfortable, and so on and so forth, then there's no reason to think that you have to do them to build muscle. Uh, muscle really only knows tension ultimately and potentially damage in metabolic stress, but mostly tension. So there are so many different ways to create that tension in the muscle that, yeah, your muscles don't know what exercises you're doing, even though different exercises can load the muscle differently. And that's an important point. And that's actually probably something worth exploring a little bit further because uh, one of the problems with this very essentialist focus on these lifts is that we actually have research showing that that isn't the most optimal way to train. Um, there was a study published, I'm going to pull this up here, a study published in 2014, uh, Fonseca and colleagues, uh, Jacob Wilson was on this paper too. This is actually a really cool study. Uh, it's a little bit confusing if you just look at the abstract here, but in essence what they found, I'm going to pull up the full text here. So basically what they did, they had one group perform only squats on their training program, that was it. And the other group did squats, leg press, deadlifts, and lunges. Um, so they had what they called a, a varied exercise training program. And what they found, I'll just read it off here from the, the full text. They said the groups that varied exercises throughout the training program had more hypertrophy among all the quadriceps muscle heads. Uh, on the other hand, the group that varied neither the intensity nor the exercises, so they just did squats, had no significant hypertrophy in the vastus medialis, so the teardrop muscle, and rectus femoris muscles. Um, so what this paper showed us basically was that if you vary your exercises and do more than just squat, chances are you'll get more even hypertrophy across all heads of the quads. And I, I don't think it would be a stretch to extend that onto other muscle groups. So if you, say, load the back from different angles, different planes of motion, different loading modalities, that's going to be more effective than, say, just doing a row or just doing a row and a pull-up. Again, I don't really have any data to support that, but I think it makes intuitive sense based on this. Um, okay, so people do act like these exercises are essential. I uh, disagree, or I agree with Cliff on that one. In bodybuilding, there are no exercises that you must do. Uh, five out of five agree there. Um, all that matters in bodybuilding is that you've built a body. Uh, it really doesn't matter how you did it. This part is interesting. So, in fact, the closest thing to a must-do movement in bodybuilding would have to be a dumbbell lateral raise. Now, I honestly don't think I've ever heard that said before, let alone by a coach as prestigious as Cliff. Uh, it, it's a little bit funny because it goes against so much of what you hear, uh, but I think I totally see what he's saying. And the more I've thought about it, uh, I feel like I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I would say uh, neither agree nor disagree on this one um, because I agree with the general sentiment that side delts are extremely important for bodybuilders and if we just run with the six examples that are the six exercises that i just outlined so the squat deadlift bench press row or pendle row uh, pull up and overhead press i think i got them all there's really no exercise in there that's going to hit the side delts adequately uh, because the bench press is a fantastic front delt uh, pec and tricep exercise but eh, not so great for the side delts and almost no rear delts. But the row is pretty good for the rear delts, so that's fine. And the overhead press, again, is actually much more front delt. You can get a little bit more side delt uh, by doing the exercise standing and with dumbbells, uh, but still I wouldn't consider it to be nearly as good as something like a lateral raise. So it seems like if there's really any holes in this essentialist program, uh, it probably is with respect to a side delt exercise. Now, you could make the case that, well, what about the calves? They're not really being trained here at all. They get a little bit of stabilization work on the squat and deadlift, but not really enough to maximize their growth for sure. So you could say a squat uh, or, or a calf raise would be uh, the closest thing to a must-do movement. But uh, I see that also calves don't usually win bodybuilding shows, whereas a good set of capped side delts really is critical to success in bodybuilding since it's just paramount to creating that X-frame appearance, which is everything uh, to a bodybuilder. So I would say side delts are more important than calves. And then you could say, 
well, what about the traps? Because uh, the row isn't really going to hit the upper traps well. It'll really nail the mid and lower traps, but the upper traps are probably being neglected. Uh, they might get a bit of isometric work from the deadlift, and that is true. They probably would grow from that. Uh, but still, nothing is really going to hit them probably quite as much as a exercise that actually trains scapular elevation. So you could say something like a shrug would be a must-do movement. Uh, but then again, similar to the calves, I would say no one really wins bodybuilding shows based on their, their upper traps. So I would say that, yeah, the side delt exercise would still trump the traps in that case. Um, however, where I disagree a little bit is on the choice of the dumbbell lateral raise. Because if I was to pick just one exercise, which is a bit of a silly exercise anyway because uh, I don't think any of us are really trying to take this overly minimalist approach where you're just trying to take like the eight best exercises and only do those and get, get rid of everything else. But still, if we were to entertain that as an idea, I would probably go with uh, the upright row because with the upright row, you're getting both shoulder abduction, so bringing the arms out to the side, and scapular elevation. So you really get to hit the side delts and you're also going to hit the, the upper traps, which would be neglected uh, in those core movements as well. So I would have to put the upright row over the dumbbell lateral raise, and I'd probably even put the cable lateral raise over the dumbbell lateral raise just because you get a little bit more of a consistent resistance curve with that one than with the dumbbell where you have this circular resistance path where you only get really peak tension here up, uh, up at the top. But in any case, that would be nit nitpicking a little bit. I guess in Cliff's defense, you could argue that, well, with the lateral raise, it's actually probably less damaging overall than an upright row would be because with the upright row you've got multiple joints involved you're going to be using heavier weights so it might actually be a little harder to recover from whereas with the dumbbell lateral raise you could really hammer your side delts four five six days a week with those squeeze in a ton of volume and really blow up your side delts without too much of a recovery cost as long as you're you're managing your proximity to failure properly. Um, so I totally see where he's coming from with the lateral raise thing, but if I was to just pick one, it would probably be uh, an upright row. We don't actually have to program like this in reality. We can pick and choose exercises to fill in gaps as needed. So I'm not a big fan of this like purist essentialist approach to programming in general, which is why I would say as a whole, I actually do agree quite a lot with what uh, Cliff is talking about here. Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you guys enjoy this sort of like sit and rant and talk video, uh, obviously I kind of organized my thoughts ahead of time, but still this is sort of how I'm thinking about this right now. One thing I've thought about doing is kind of doing like a summary at the end of these videos, uh, but they're already kind of long. And so what I might start doing in the future is just giving kind of a bullet point summary of what I talked about in the description box below. Um, so if you guys think that that would be helpful, uh, just let me know. And uh, once again, uh, thank you to Squarespace for supporting the video. Uh, make sure you check out that first link in the description box below if you'd like to get started with your own website or your own online store. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. And I'll be back here with a new Technique Tuesday episode on Tuesday. So I'll see you guys all here then.